Hi, everyone. I'm Dan Alvarez, and welcome to the uh, uh, Big Guys This Week in Anderson on the Big Guys Sportscast on USBN Sports. And uh, we, as always, join with my co host, uh, Steve Ellis. And, Steve, uh, we kind of weren't real sure how we were going to have much of a sports season if we were going to have much at all. We're like, I think we're into like week three, week four. And, and I'm just so happy that we're able to still be able to do sports and catch up with some of our guests, especially today. It's awesome, Danny. Just kind of getting back to normal a little bit. You know, last couple of weeks, my both my daughters participate. One's a cheerleader, one's a soccer player. So just going to the games just kind of feels, you know, somewhat back to normal. I know we got to continue to wear masks and, and be careful and, and, you know, try to get through and get past this. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot better than sitting at home. Yeah, and the thing, I think the big thing, too, is that it's – I think that it's they're, – they're starting to figure things out. And I think, for the most part, we haven't seen too many cancellations or too many things, which is a really positive sign that everybody's kind of trying to follow the rules and what's happening. Yeah, and, and you know, and where they do have those cases, they're being extra cautious, which is unfortunate for some of the kids. And, you know, initially, you know, a lot of people weren't sure they are going to get any of the fall season in. But, you know, if they can get at least part of it, that's a – that's a good thing, especially for the seniors. Yeah, so we're really excited to have our next guest joining us, and that's our, our second uh, father-daughter, I guess, duo, if you want to say it. We had earlier Brian Sullivan and uh, Megan Sullivan on earlier, and we're, we're joined with uh, uh, Caitlin Calder. I almost messed this up. We and Steve were talking <laughs> about this. I was almost said Caitlin Newton. It's not Caitlin Newton anymore. But, uh, Caitlin, uh, we really appreciate you taking the time. I know it's been kind of crazy trying to fit into your schedule, but thanks for joining us. Of course. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, let's get let's get into a little bit about uh, we, we know what your accomplishments are at, at Anderson and also NKU, but talk a little bit, let everybody know, like, when did you like start your soccer? When did you know like soccer was going to be a sport that you really going to enjoy playing? Um, I, from the beginning, I think uh, my parents probably wouldn't say the same, I guess. Um, I don't remember this, of course, but, you know, when you're playing three, four-year-old soccer, apparently I was the one that was picking flowers and uh, <laughs> didn't want to go to practice or anything like that. Um, I, when they got me involved in, in Cardinals at the time, which was kind of one of the only clubs around here in Cincinnati, right. um, they were actually kind of shocked that I brought it up. And, and I think the uh, one moment that they'll remember and what I remember, too, is uh, when they told me my sister was better at soccer than me. That's when I knew I needed to start turning it on. And, and that's when I kind of got into the competitive side, uh, I guess it was, because she wasn't going to outcompete me at that. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, so I, I went um, all the way through um, the Cardinals uh, club, and then eventually um, that turned into uh, King Soccer Academy, which was kind of a merge between um, one of the Northern Kentucky clubs and, and Cardinals um, uh, and then I actually left, um, during my freshman year and went to Hammer, uh, which was an awesome experience too. I, I really loved every club I play for, but then it all kind of came full circle. Um, the team I left at Kings and the team at Hammer that I was on merged my senior year in high school. So it was kind of, uh, just an awesome way to end that club run and, and head off into the college scene. So that was fun. That's pretty cool. Yes. Did you play any other sports, Caitlin? Uh, yes, I played um, softball as well um, up until the sixth grade. So whatever age you can start playing um, up until sixth grade. And then I also played um, basketball all through middle school um, until I got to ninth grade and kind of wanted to focus more on soccer, um, which, you know, looking back is, is uh, one of the, the greatest things I could have done because I think it kind of got me into the recruiting side of things soccer wise. Um, but also I missed basketball. Um, so I was able to try out for Anderson my senior year and, and play at Anderson my senior year, which was some of the most fun that, that I've had. So, yes, I played all three it, to some extent. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit about your, you know, how you zeroed in on soccer and what you did at Anderson, because these are some incredible numbers, Danny. I don't know if you know these. I'm going to I'm going to rattle these off. And it's just incredible because not too many people can say they've done this. So, Caitlin not just uh, played all four years varsity, but she started every game but one, which is an incredible feat. I mean, how many people can say that? You know, so, you know, she got a four-year letter, which was incredible. She was not just a starter. She was all league, if I'm 
not mistaken, Caitlin, correct me if I'm wrong, all league all four years, and she was first team all league junior and senior year. And then her senior year, she was first team all city, which is just an incredible, I mean, tribute to how well of a soccer player you were, Caitlin. Thank you. I appreciate it. I think it was honorable mention at some point in there, but but just have the opportunity to play not only in Anderson, but in the league that we're in was awesome. Well, talk about your team that you played with, some of the players you played with, and, and how that experience was playing at Anderson. Sure. Um, coming in my freshman year, it was uh, just kind of a lot to adjust to. You know, you come from playing only club season with kids that um, – Maybe they went to your school, maybe not, but from kids all over uh, Cincinnati to just zeroing in on the kids that you see every day at school and have, have grown up with, um, that was pretty cool. Um, additionally, just being brought into that varsity squad by um, folks that were, I mean, they're seniors in high school and here I am like just barely turning 14, <laughs> getting ready to go right. out there and play. Um, they were nothing but welcoming and, and awesome. Um, something that I still keep in contact to with this day. Um, uh, one, one who lives right across the street. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty cool to stay in touch with all of those guys. And, and we don't get to see each other too, too often. But when we do, we, we always talk about um, the great times that we had, especially with our team. Um, I would have been a sophomore, I think, which was 2010 um, when we went to the state semifinal. So yeah. to, to see those guys is, is pretty fun. We'll talk about that experience. How, how was that? How exciting was that? It, incredible. Um, you know, uh, my coach at, at the time, Bill Miller, was always um, encouraging us to, you know, take the season one game at a time. But also, um, we've got those big things in mind at the end for that playoff run. And it was kind of just like, you know, we'd, we'd win a game and we'd prep for the next one. And we just kept advancing, advancing, advancing. And um, the, the group that we had, not only what were um, skilled and, and really, really talented in different areas, but also the chemistry that we had on the field, um, I think is, is really what got us that far. Um, one of my favorite memories about that tournament run was um, uh, Cindy Losing, who was a year older than us, asked uh, Coach if, if we won one of the, I can't remember if it was the district final or the regional final, if we won it, if you take us to the precinct. Um, and, and we got really close. We got really close. He ended up <laughs> taking us to Chipotle instead, but, but that, I mean, he, he had to have been sweating. I don't know. We were, we were really close to, to getting out of that state game. So that's yeah. always something that I'll remember and going to celebrate after with everybody there. That was pretty yeah. cool. Very cool. Yeah. And, and so, you know, after that, after the Anderson high school career, you went on to uh, play at NKU and first off, talk, talk a little bit about the, the transition from playing, high school to to playing college and was it was it a culture shock for you too on that as far as like you were saying when you were a freshman and playing varsity was it kind of the same thing with you playing in college soccer yeah I think um not just you know the pace and the speed of the game but just also the environment in and of itself it wasn't you know the adjustment you know from 14 to to high school but going into that college scene where you're playing teams from all over the country and and there's things like travel rosters and there's things like, um, you know, the pregame meetings and all, all of that preparation piece, um, which is what I knew I signed up for and I knew I wanted to play. But sure, that was a that was a huge adjustment. You know, everybody's there for the same reason. And, and, and that's to, to play at the collegiate level. So um, that was an adjustment. I think um, the preparation that I did kind of behind the scenes and, and I have a lot of people, you know, filling me in about what it's going to take to uh, be a freshman and be an impactful freshman. Um, and so I really, really took um, all the preparation between, you know, the fi uh, fitness and conditioning packets and the strength and conditioning program that, that they had put together. I really, really bought in because I was really afraid of what would happen if I did it. <laughs> um, so looking back, I think that's one of the, the best things that I could have done to make that adjustment a little easier. Um, and also looking back, I think that's one of the things that um, kind of helped propel me from the get-go and what I tell kids that are going to uh, play at that college level uh, to buy into from the get-go. Yeah, and it, it's, you know, we're sitting here thinking about, Steve and I were talking before we went on air here, that you started 77 games in NKU and you were all, I think you were Atlantic uh, Sun, all freshman team. 
those accomplishments as a right there as a freshman, but 77 games, that's, that's an incredible, incredible career. And you got to be very happy with, you know, what, what you, what you accomplished at NKU. Thank you very much. It, it was an awesome four years, um, just all around. I, there, I cannot say enough good things about the university, the, the athletic programs. I mean, it's an awesome place. So I'm grateful for all the people that helped me achieve all those things. So it's been, it's been very fun. Now, were you there when you transitioned into Division I? Uh, yes, yes. So I think um, they, in 2012, it was official. Um, and so the class before me played that Division I um, schedule, but the class of 2013 was kind of the first recruited um, uh, D1 class, I guess you would say. So we knew we were D1 as that recruiting class was, was going through. So that was, also, that was also a cool transition, too, um, just to see all of the uh, change within the program. And, and it has grown leaps and bounds even since, since I've been there. So it's just an awesome place. Yeah. yeah. What about the, the, the experience though, too, is uh, the playing the first ever, you know, get your tournament bid or whatever and playing in that, that, that had been really exciting and not only for you, but also for the university. Absolutely. I, I mean, we were fortunate that we were one of the first program, I mean, we a fall season, so we got the first crack at it. Um, but at being a freshman, you know, we, we kind of set this huge goal at that time. We actually weren't even allowed to participate in our, um, conference tournament. So once our last game on October 26th hit, uh, we were done and there really wasn't a whole lot that we were playing for. Um, the next year, still in the Atlantic Sun and Division One, we were still in that period where we couldn't um, get an NCAA bid. Um, so being able to the very first year, our senior year, um, we knew we had been working uh, for that since day one. And so it was just kind of a really, really great send off. And, and I couldn't imagine ending uh, a playing career on any other note, really. It was awesome. That is cool. Yes. Did, you, did you get to play those games at home for, for the tournament or where'd you go? So for um, the tournament, you get to host if you are um, the number one seed. So I think the, the semifinal, or not the semifinal game, uh, one of the play-in games, if you were the higher seed, you did get to host. So there were a couple times where we were like the, uh, the three seed and we got to host, I think it was like five or something like that. So we got to host one of those games. But other than that, the Horizon League tournament was at whoever was um, number one seed in mm -hmm. the whole conference. So we were uh, lucky enough to get to go to Milwaukee. Uh, both of those years that we were able to participate in our conference tournament. Um, so we headed up there and, and my junior year, we uh, got knocked out in the semis. Um, but then the senior year, we were able to, to win it up there. So, and then my sophomore year, we actually did get to participate in the ASUM tournament too. So we got to fly down to Florida and, and oh, uh, cool. play down there a couple of days as FGCU was uh, the number one uh, in that conference at the time. That's awesome. Yes. Wow. The, tra the travel was amazing. Um, if you ask my parents, they enjoyed it too. It was, <laughs> yeah. it was taxing at times. Um, but, but they wouldn't have missed it for the world. So I'm very grateful for, for I remember their tell, support. I remember your dad telling me about them, uh, your, your parents driving up to Milwaukee for, for that game. Yes. So the semifinal that we were playing in was on a Thursday in Milwaukee. Uh, my brother Jake had the Anderson State playoff game on Friday. Yep. And we had the tournament championship on Saturday. So they drove to Milwaukee on Thursday back home to Anderson on Friday, and then back up to Milwaukee on Saturday. Wow. So How about that? You're wow. not going to find folks that are more dedicated than that. That is for sure. A couple of special people right there. They really are. They really are. So now uh, you, you have an unbelievable career at Anderson and then start every game. You go to NKU, you start every game, have a great career, and just like that, you're thrown into the coaching world. And so, yes. so let, let's talk a little bit about uh, how that got started. Um, was that something you had thought about? And all the way to now that you're uh, the head coach at Kings High School. Um, you know, growing up in, in my house, th there wasn't anything that I, I didn't know any better than teaching and coaching. And, and I really think all the effort and just, um, 
the amazing attitude that both of my parents have towards mm -hmm. um, coaching and education that that led me there. Um, yeah. if, if they came home and, you know, were, were complaining and weren't happy, you know, you take notice of that, you would, you, there's no way you'd pick a career choice like that. Um, but seeing how not only happy they were in their career, but how happy they made others too. Um, yeah. That was definitely one of the reasons why um, I wanted to jump into teaching and coaching. Um, yeah. they're, they're, it's just so impactful. So I, I, that, there was no other option for me. At one point I wanted to be a vet, but there's, there's <laughs> looking back, I'm like, how would I ever have been able to take care of a sick dog? I can't even look at a sick dog. So, so I'm definitely on the right uh, career path, I think. Oh, buddy. Well, you, certainly a couple of great uh, role models you have there. That's for sure. So, so let's talk about, so you're the head coach at Kings High School. This is yes. your third year, I believe. Fourth, actually. Fourth. Holy yes, God. I can't even believe it. Wow. So you got a, a seniors that you've coached all four years. Yes. So my very first class um, are seniors this year. So to just see them grow, I mean, we, I always tell them we were babies together and, and that couldn't be further from the truth, um, <laughs> but, but they're very, very special to me. Yeah. Well, that's incredible. So, so, you know, got to ask this question, um, you know, cause I, like you went to Anderson and, and coached and then went away for a little bit. Mm -hmm. how, how, what was that experience like you, when you had the coach against Anderson when you were at Kings? For sure. Um, so my first two years as the coach at Kings, um, Anderson actually came out to play us uh, at, at uh, Kings High School. Okay. And so that, that was unique. Um, you know, I still knew girls on the team um, from Anderson. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was – you know, not as far removed from the program as I, as I guess I am now, obviously. Um, but then that third year when we played at Anderson, you know, I didn't really think much of it when we were at Kings, but like actually stepping foot on that turf and knowing that that was where you put all your blood, sweat and tears. And now mm -hmm. these kids on the bench is where you're putting all your blood, sweat and tears. It was a weird, eerie, yeah. not eerie, but it was just like an awesome feeling. And, and to see, you know, Coach Pat, who – who I owe a lot of my college career to just for all of his help in, in uh, preparing me to get there. And to see April on the sidelines, who, who is like a second mom to me practically, um, mm -hmm. to, see, to see all those people um, was very special, very special. So it's a, it's a special place, always will be. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, talk, talking a little about special and special things. Your dad obviously has got a special place in both Steve and I, uh, you know, our heart because you know yes. we've been friends with your dad for a very, very long time. And 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 speaking of that, growing up, you know, your dad was at Colrain, uh, you know, then he was at Anderson. And just talk. You were saying earlier about how your parents influenced you. Talk a little bit about that with your dad growing up through the sports and being at Colrain and being at Anderson and how that was uh, for you growing up as a kid. Sure. Um, from about the time I could like grasp what a football or baseball was until the eighth grade when he was no longer um, there, I was a Coleraine cool Cardinal through and through. I went to every game. Um, <laughs> wore, I had all the spirit wear. People didn't know where I was getting that. Like, why are you wearing a Coleraine cool sweatshirt? And I'm like, well, here's why. Um, <laughs> so I really was. I wanted to go to, you know, Coleraine cool High School and be a Coleraine cool Cardinal just because I grew up seeing. Um, how amazing that community was and, and going to uh, practices with my dad or riding with my grandparents to um, Friday night football games. That was awesome. Um, and then when he made the switch over, I was in eighth grade, I believe. And so my freshman year at Anderson was his um, either second or third year um, over at Anderson. And a lot of people will ask, you know, did, did you care that dad was a teacher in the building? Like, was it weird at all for you? Right. And I wouldn't trade it uh, for the world. Um, I would, you know, stop in on his, on his plan bell and just see what was going on or keep my lunch in his room. I never used yeah. my locker because I have my <laughs> spot in the classroom. That's um, right. But, but that, that was a really cool experience and, and one that I hope to get to have one day. But um, he really is, you know, uh, our family's best friend and, and rock. So yeah. he's just awesome. It was a cool and experience. Not only a best friend for you and your family, but to a lot of us too. I mean, he's, you know, I, we, we say this on multiple shows, multiple podcasts, hands down the best AD in the city of since I, no I, I don't, I don't care what anybody's, I mean, you might say a little bit differently because you do have an athletic director at the Kings, but 
you know, he, we, we, we definitely know what, what he means to not, not only you, but to, to, to many people in the community of Anderson and uh, just, just yeah, and love your dad. <laughs> and I'll go one step further, Danny, is that, you know, not only is he a great athletic director and he's, and he's so positive and, and the kids love him, the parents love him, but who else would you rather <laughs> in the position that he's in right now with going through the whole COVID thing Absolutely. than to have a, a leader like Newt? I mean, it's just incredible. Yeah, no doubt about it. He's just a great, great, uh, great dude. And we, we really appreciate everything that he's done for us. <laughs> yes, yeah, so sorry. I have barking dogs at home. That's so right. I'm trying on. to like keep the, keep the peace on here. Hey, hey, it's on no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, 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 have, we, have, we have the dogs oh, too. So we know oh that that's Oh my gosh. Nice. Teaching from home was interesting. They made lots of appearances. I had to yeah. record redo lots of things just because they were barking um but but thank you for for your kind words about dad he is the the most positive person um most real person that i think no you'll, you'll find yeah. so that's why he's good at what he does he loves his kids and he loves his job so yeah and, and you got a you got a, a guy you know your dad that went to turpin and your mom went to mcnick right right and here the right. kids are all went to anderson how about that Danny? <laughs> i know it's completing them all that's right. That's right. Yes. Yes. So, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, as I was saying about the whole COVID thing and how positive, you know, influence your dad has been, but, but, uh, you know, as much as everybody's kind of been down the last six months with everything going on and shut down with the COVID thing, there was something exciting that happened uh, a couple months ago for you. And you recently got married, so congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It was an exciting time. Um, definitely not one that was planned. Uh, not the, uh, not the uh, arrangement that I guess we would have uh, looked at or what you think you're going to have when you're planning your wedding. Um, but it, it was awesome nonetheless. And, and we owe that to a lot of special um, family and, and just people that kept us positive and in in those times i mean you can there's two options you could either cry about it or you could go forward and and focus on what's important and for us that was um the marriage so well you, know, you, we were, you guys certainly you certainly adapted i saw the pictures of your parents backyard and that big circus tent that you guys had that was yeah. incredible that looked like a great time and and looking back at it that uh, my parents' backyard is not where we planned on having our reception uh, with <laughs> the 300 people that we had coming, um, but um, I wouldn't have it any other way. Looking back on it, it I think it made it that much more special uh, to, to have it at home. So it was awesome, and and we missed the, the folks that were invited that weren't able to come, unfortunately, due to um, the pandemic, but um, we know that it's a more, a lot more than you know the the day and the party and the people it's it's about the lifetime so it was awesome yeah. well that's great that's great so i want to go back real quick just revisit the coaching aspect and and uh, your playing career um because you certainly have a wealth of knowledge just you know yourself and your family and everything um you know what would you say caitlin to like incoming freshmen you know, because as you know, and, and Danny and I both know, and I'm living it right now with Abby, how fast the career goes. What would you say to, to kids coming into high school? And what do you say to your incoming freshmen at Kings? Um, that, that's a question that, you know, the, the, the kids ask every day and, and every your answer could change every day. Everybody plays for, for different reasons. And you just have to pretend, I think, that um, – that, that I know everybody says it and it might sound cliche at some point, but you really do have to play every game like it's your last and have uh, zero regrets going off of the field. That was one of the things that um, my dad always told me was um, every time you leave the field, make sure you're not regretting uh, the performance that you just had. So when I had to go to NKU and run our fitness test the very first time uh, as a freshman, he said, don't have any regrets. So that's kind of what I... Uh, roll with and um, it really helped me get to get to where we got to go at NKU so that Perfect. would be my advice don't yeah. regret any performance love it right, we're, we're gonna try to get this uh, wrapped up and we always do it the the last end of this uh, podcast is uh, ask uh, some of your favorite memories and 
we're going to go ahead and start maybe as uh, your, your favorite memories at, at Anderson High School, and then we'll go at NKU and then also as a coach. So you can just let us know your favorite memory uh, starting off with Anderson. Sure. Um, Anderson, it's, you know, I got to think back. It's longer, longer ago than I'd like to admit that I was a high school. Um, but I'd have to say one of my favorite uh, memories was that, that state run that we made, um, particularly uh, the game out at Centerville. I can't remember if it was the regional final or semi. Um, uh, we played Centerville at Lakota East, maybe it was. Um, and I scored uh, a head goal, which, uh, a head ball, which was, um, looking back, one of probably my, my favorite goals um, to date, just because it, it came from everybody on the field and I just happened to be there to, to tink it in or whatever. Um, but the, just the celebration after that and moving on to the next game and, and, and coming to school the next day and being with all the girls, um, that was definitely one of my favorite Anderson moments. Um, moving on to NKU, obviously I have to go with uh, winning that Horizon League championship. Mm -hmm. um, which was on my birthday, actually. So oh, nice. um, there is there's a video somewhere of we get we get the trophy and we've got like our t-shirts and our hat. I always wanted the oversized t-shirt and the championship hat, <laughs> no matter what it was. That's all I wanted. <laughs> um, but then they're all singing "Happy Birthday," which was um, turned a special day into yeah. one of, you know one of the most special days. Um, so that was definitely uh, up in NKU. And coaching at Kings, I have to say, um, was uh, when we got our first uh, playoff win, um, uh, we, we beat West Claremont. And it, it was my first playoff win um, at, at Kings, but it was also um, the, the group that I was with, their first playoff win too. And just to see their excitement of, of we can do this and, and we've got a shot at this and, and we can participate in this tournament just as anyone, uh, just as well as anyone else. Um, that was pretty special too, just, just to see their joy and their excitement. Um, you know, great. You, you've been there before as a coach, but to see your players get to go through that and experience all those emotions um, yep. was very touching. It's very that, cool. that is awesome. And I, I tell you what, we really appreciate and it's uh, been hard to try to get together. We appreciate you taking the time to join us. We got the pleasure. I, Steve and I did of meet your husband. I never met your husband up until Matt, Steve's uh, nephew, got married. So I got to, to meet your, and he's great. You got another great, great guy in, in, in your circle and everything. And just I really enjoyed my time with Bobby. So it's going to be nice to hopefully see him around a little bit more too as well. And, and you know, what's weird for me is knowing I know Bobby's dad. Oh, and yeah. That was really weird because I grew up with him and knowing uh -huh. him. So it was just kind of really you know, full circle to bring everybody around. So, but uh, we're happy for you. And thank you so much for yep. taking the time. You know, we're, we know we always love Anderson, but we always have that special place for all former, uh, you know, Anderson student athletes. And we always keep an eye on you for Kings and we wish you all the luck, yep. maybe except for against Anderson. Maybe. We'll <laughs> <laughs> and, and likewise, likewise. Um, thank you guys so much for having me on. It's a, it's an honor to be on here and, and you guys are uh, really, really great. And, and I appreciate you having me on. Great job. Thank, Thank you. you. So for wrapping up here for this week in Anderson, it's uh, Steve Ellis, David Carter, Dan Albert. We'll catch you next week on This Week in Anderson.